Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we are starting a new unit, Unit 6, and it's all about factoring, really. It's all about quadratic equations. Factoring plays a big part of that. So, in this first video, we're going to be doing a very basic step. Okay, but this is going to be the first step for pretty much everything we do for the rest of the unit. So you have to get this step down. It's not something that's going to go away. Every single one of these problems build on each other. So really got to get this step down from the get go. All right, so finding the GCF, which is what we shorten for the greatest common factor. So when given two terms, we want to be able to pull out the largest factor that both of those terms have in common. So with these three, we're going to be just pulling, just determining what would be the greatest common factor between two terms. And then over here, we're going to talk about actually factoring out the GCF. So first, let's just get the hang of finding the GCF. Looking at my first example, 12 and 90. So I need to figure out what is a number that the highest number, because we want the greatest one, what is the greatest number that goes into 12 that also goes into 90? I think the best place to start is with the smaller number and asking yourself, okay, so I know 12 goes into 12. 12 is the biggest number that can go into 12. Does 12 go into 90? And some of you might immediately say no, but some of us might not be sure, so let's test it out. You bring out your graphing calculator and you do 90 divided by 12. Okay, I see that I get a decimal, so I know it's not a, a factor. Um, it's only a factor if you divide and get a whole number. So let's think of the next lowest number that goes into 12. Um, or it might just help you to try to think of everything that goes into 12. So we know 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and that's it. So let's try the next number down from 12, which would be 6. Does 6 go into 90? Well, let's bring out our calculator and check. So 90 divided by 6. And I see it does. That evenly goes into 90. So our GCF of 12 and 90 will be 6. That is their greatest common factor. Looking at number two, sometimes it's not always easy to just pull all the factors of something um, out off the top of your head. Okay, so I I can't say all the things that go into 104. It's always good to make sure, start with the lower number, so 104, and say, okay, 104 goes into 104, right? Does 104 go into 112? And I know just using logic, it does not. Um, you could double check and just do 112 divided by 104, but you're going to get a decimal. So I'm going to have to figure out what are the factors of 104, what are the factors of 112, and see where um, they line up. So let me show you a trick of how you can use your calculator. Instead of just doing a ton of trial and error, there's a more exact way to figure this out. So you're going to go to your y equals function, which we should be pretty used to by now. And you're going to type in, I usually do the lower number. So 104 divided by x. This is a trick that you can use. Um, it'll really come in handy for factoring. All right, so second graph. This pulls up your table. And this shows me all of the factors of 104. So I'm going to scroll up to 1. So I see 1 and 104. 2 and 52. 3 would not be a factor because its corresponding y value is a decimal. So 3 would not be a value. Okay, but 4 and 26 would be 1. Let's keep going. So we're looking for those whole numbers. 8 and 13. And then you'll notice we have 13 and 8. So once you repeat itself, so we had 8 and 13 and now 13 and 8, then you're done. You know you've seen all the factors. So I want to start with maybe just noting some of these down. Okay, so I know 1 and 104. Let's say 2 and 52. I'm just going to note over here. 2 times 52. 4 times 26. And we said 8 and 13. 
So I want to figure out what is the highest number in all those choices that would also go into 112. So what I'm going to do, oops, clear out of there. Um, I'm going to start with the largest one, so 52. I'm going to do 112 divided by 52. All right, it's not a factor. Get a long decimal. Okay, let's go to the next number down, 26. 112 divided by 26. E, that's not a factor either. All right, what about 13? Nope, keep going down. What about 8? There we go. Okay, so I see that 8 times 14 is going to give me 112. So what is these two numbers, GCF? The GCF is 8. That is their greatest factor in common. Let's look at number 3. So you'll notice we not only have numbers here, we've got letters thrown in too. So it's really the same concept. We're just trying to figure out what could we pull out? What is the greatest common factor that both of these terms could give us? Let's start with the numbers. So I've got 20 and 40. Well, I know 20 goes into 20. And I know 20 also goes into 40. It does twice. So I can already say the GCF number is 20. All right, but now I've got to worry about my X and Y too. So looking at just the X, this term has one X. Okay, that's an X to the first. Okay, and this one has one X, X to the first. So what is the greatest common factor in there? it would just be one X. You want to pull out what each one is able to give you, okay? Um, and it'll make more sense the more you do it. Let's see, let's check our Y. So I've got Y to the first, and then I've got Y to the second. So again, I want the greatest, it's gotta be the same thing I'm pulling out of each one, and I want the highest number I can do from both. So this one can only give me a Y. That one could give me two Y's, but this one can only give me one. So therefore, the greatest thing I can pull out is just one. And that confuses a lot of students. They don't understand. They're saying, why, why am I not pulling this Y squared out? That one has more. But can this one give you Y squared? No. It's only got one Y to give, so it can only give you what it has. So in this case, we would have a leftover Y up here. We'll get to that concept in a second. Okay, so that is just figuring out what is the GCF of terms. All right, let's come over here. This builds onto that step a little bit. So now we not only want to determine the GCF, we want to actually factor out the GCF from the given expression. All right, so how this works is first thing I need to do is, is find out what is the GCF. So we're kind of just doing this first step. So let's look at my numbers. I've got 30 and 90. Okay, I know 30 goes into 30. And I know 30 also goes into 90 three times, right? So I can go ahead and say, all right, my number is going to be 30. That was fairly easy. All right, and as far as my X is, this one's got one and that one's got two. So what is the most I could pull out? It would just be one. Now that we've determined the GCF, I want to, in parentheses, rewrite the original equation having taken this out. And the way I do that, literally what I'm doing is I'm dividing out that GCF from each term. That's literally what we're doing. We're dividing it out. And we're going to put what we have left in the parentheses. So what is 30x divided by 30x? Well, that would just cancel, right? The 30 and 30 would cancel, the x and the x would cancel, so we would just have one, one left. What about negative 90 divided by 30? Well, that would be negative three. And what would x squared divided by x be? So you, there's two ways to think about this. You can say, okay, well, I'm dividing with exponents, right? And when I divide with exponents going way back to unit one, I would take the top exponent and subtract the bottom exponent, so two minus one, all right, which would just be one. 
You can think about it like that, or some students prefer to think about it like, okay, I had two X's, I'm pulling one out, how many do I have left? Which is really saying the same thing, it's just kind of making it a little more simple. Um, some students prefer to think of it that way. Okay, so this would be the GCF factored out of the equation. If I were to distribute that 30X back into the parentheses, it should give me back the original equation. So that's a way you can kind of double check yourself to make sure you've done it right. All right, let's look at a little, little more complex example. This one has three terms. So starting with just the number, let's see, I've got three, 21, and 24. Save yourself some time, just start with the lowest number. So three, I know three goes into three. Does three go into 21? Yeah, seven times. Does three go into 24? Yeah, eight times. So I know three is gonna be my GCF number. Now let's look at the X's. This one has X squared. This one just has one X. And this one has three X's. So what is the most all of them can give me, but it has to be the same one being pulled out of each? Well, that one only has one to give. So all I can pull out is one. Even though that one has two and that one has three, this one only has one to give. That's the most we can pull out. What about our y's? So I've got y squared, y cubed, and y to the second. So the most this one could give me would be two. The most this one could give me would be two. The most that one could give me would be three, but it has to be the same number being pulled out of each. So the most I can take out is two. All right, so now let's build in what we have. Now that we fact, we figured out the GCF, let's actually factor it out and list what we have left. So literally what we're doing is dividing out this 3xy squared, 3xy squared, 3xy squared. All right, so three divided by three, that would just be one, right? So those would cancel to one. You can write one or not. Let's see, x squared, and then we're pulling one x out, two minus one would just be one x, right? And then we've got y squared divided by y squared. Well, those are the same, so they just cancel each other out. Let's keep going. So you could have one x or just x, whatever your preference is. Negative 21 divided by three. Well, that would be negative seven. X divided by X, those cancel to one. Y cubed divided by Y squared. So you could either think of this as three minus two would be one, or think, okay, I had three Y's. I'm taking two out. How many do I have left? Just one. Positive 24 divided by three. That would be positive eight. X cubed divided by X to the first, that would be X to the second. And Y squared divided by Y squared, those would cancel out. So that's what I have left, okay? So if I were to take this three X Y squared and distribute it back in through multiplying, I should get back to the original equation, okay? So that is how we factor out the greatest common factor. This is such a foundational skill for this unit. You gotta get this down. So practice, practice, practice with these. All right, this has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.